Hi there, it's Christy Still with MommyHatesCooking.com. Today I'm back to show you one of the most popular ninja foodie recipes that is on my website right now. It's the one pot meatloaf with potatoes and corn. So you can do this all in the ninja foodie. It does have several steps, so unlike a lot of my recipes that are really little prep time, this one is going to take you a little bit more for prep. So count, count that into your cook time too, that you know that this is gonna take a little bit longer than maybe a 30 minute meal. We like to do this one on the weekends whenever we're not really in a hurry. I'm not running from one activity to the next. So it's a great Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening family meal. Um, it's actually our kids' personal favorite. Um, this meatloaf was actually originally meatballs, a recipe that my aunt had sent me. And really, the secret is in the sauce. So I'm gonna show you what that sauce recipe is here in a little bit. But what I did is I took that recipe she sent me, and over the years I've recreated it into a meatloaf that we really like, using the sauce that goes on top of the meatballs that she had sent. And that really makes this recipe. And saying that though, if you have a personal favorite meatloaf recipe that's say in your family, you can always use the same method and use the meatloaf recipe that you prefer. So right now I'm gonna start by showing you how to get this meatloaf prepared, and then we're gonna move on to some other steps. So right now I have, as you can see, the meat in here, and then underneath it is the garlic salt and um, onion. So that's already in there. So that's the first step. Now we've got two pounds of ground beef in here. I'm gonna go ahead and add to it two eggs that have been beaten. So you'll see those in here. Now we've got those set in there and then I'm going to go ahead and add two cups of old fashioned oats. <clears throat> in my case, I use gluten-free oats. Um, you can also use crackers or breadcrumbs, but we prefer oats. And then I'm gonna add in some evaporated milk. This is half a cup of evaporated milk. <coughs> Now that I've got all that in there, I'm gonna combine it to form the meatloaf. Now I find it's best to use my hands. It just works easier to do. So of course, after we get done, we're gonna to have to get our hands nice and cleaned. But to make this, I just combine it all with my hands until I get the meatloaf formed. Once the meatloaf is formed, we're going to put it on a sheet of foil that has been sprayed with some olive oil cooking spray to prepare to put into the Ninja Foodie. So the key here is whenever you're preparing this, make sure you get everything combined into one big loaf. So that's the first thing you need to do. So we are just going to keep getting this until all the oats, everything is mixed in. So you wanna get it really well mixed so that you know your oats aren't just covering the outside. You want them fully mixed into the meat. So it does take a little bit to get all of this mixed together. So now that I have the meatloaf all prepared in the bowl, I am going to go ahead and spray the foil with some olive oil cooking spray, just a little bit so that it doesn't stick. So now I've got my meatloaf and I am going to just place it on this foil. And I've already kind of formed the loaf while I was working it in the bowl. Now the thing here is you need it to be a little bit skinnier and long to fit in your foodie. So you're gonna have to work this to get it to fit right. And then we also are wanting to put corn in it next to it at the end. So the key is kind of how you shape this meatloaf. Now, worst comes to worst, say you made it too big and you can't fit your corn in the Ninja Foodie. Just use your microwave. Uh, most of the corn you get can easily be heated in the microwave. So it's not really that big a deal. You should be able to fit it in the foodie. But if you can't, just use the microwave and it'll be fine. So we have our meatloaf all prepared here. And now I'm gonna wash my hands and get the foodie set up and I'll show you how to get it all in there. Okay, so now that we have our meatloaf done, I've gone ahead and wrapped it in foil. And then our first thing I'm gonna do is put our potatoes in. So here's the potatoes and I've measured out three pounds of potatoes. I like to use the gold potatoes. Um, you can also use the regular russet potatoes, but um, I would stick with gold or those because the red ones tend to burn out and these are gonna be in here for a little while. So I've got all these in the foodie. Now, 
I'm going to put the basket. I'm going to go ahead and, or sorry, the rack. I'm going to put that in next. Now this you kind of have to work with to get these in with the potatoes in here. So you just kind of have to move around your potatoes until you can get them in here, which tends to be a little bit tricky, but eventually, like that, you'll get it. So now I've got that in here. And now I'm going to pour one cup of water over this so that there's some water on here. That way you don't get a burn notice for your potatoes. So now that I've got that in here, I'm going to go ahead and put the meatloaf right on top. So we're going to put that right in here. We're going to scoot it over and make sure it's nice and secured down and wrapped in foil, mainly to avoid having any um, meatloaf drip into the potatoes. And you may have to work with it a little bit to get it to fit right, like I mentioned earlier. Don't worry too much about the corn right now because we're going to do that last. So just make sure this fits for right now. And just kind of get a little bit of room here on the side, which is where we're going to put the corn in. So now we have got that all tucked in there. All right, so now it's time to put the lid on. We're gonna use the pressure cooker lid that comes with the Ninja Foodie, so this is the separate lid. So you're gonna go ahead and secure the lid. Now you're gonna make sure it's on seal. So the nozzle of the lid needs to be on seal. Once it's on seal, we're going to have it pressure cook on high pressure for 25 minutes. Now remember, two, sorry, remember too that it's going to take some time to build up the pressure, so you need to account for that as well. So even though it's 25 minutes, it's probably going to take like 40 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and get that started. And while that's cooking, I'm going to show you how to get the sauce ready to put on the um, meatloaf once it comes out. Okay, so now the Ninja Foodie is on and the meatloaf is cooking and the potatoes. So I'm going to show you real quick how to do the sauce. The sauce is very simple, and I'm going to do it right here in the saucepan. So one day I called my mom, and we have running jokes because she really, really hates to cook. She didn't really like cooking at all when we were kids. And now all of a sudden I've got her hooked on the Ninja Foodie, so she's always calling me about recipes, which is really funny because that did not happen when we were kids. Um, so anyways, I called her one day, and she said, hey, I just put that sauce in the microwave which is very much my mom. She loves to use the microwave. But that's actually not a bad idea, especially when you're cooking this recipe because then you don't even have to mess with the stove. The key to the sauce is you just want the sugar to dissolve. So you can heat it up in the microwave for like 30 seconds, stir it up and see if your sugar's dissolved. And if it is, great, it's done. If not, just put it in for a few more seconds until it is. So that really is an easy shortcut if you wanna skip the stove completely. Um, I still like to do it on the stove top. That's just how I prefer, so that's what I'm going to show you. So as you can see here, I've got my um, pan. I'm going to start, yeah, my pan. I'm just using a little saucepan, and I'm going to cook it on low. So I'm warming it up. So the first thing you're going to put in here is ketchup. So I have a cup of ketchup. You're going to see all that go in here. Now, you may have some sauce left. I have the ketchup in here. I'm just kind of letting this saucepan warm up just a bit. So the next thing I'm going to add is packed brown sugar. So then you've got onion. So I've got some chopped onion I'm going to put in here. If you don't have onion, you can also use um, onion powder. So the next thing I'm going to add is some liquid smoke, which this gives it the smokier flavor. So we want to do that. Now I'm just adding, eyeballing it, but it's about half a tape, sorry, half a teaspoon. And now it's starting to bubble up on me, so I'm going to start stirring this. So we're just going to lightly stir it because I just want to get that sugar to dissolve. And that's really all we're going for here. And then while this is cooking up here, I'm going to add just a dash of garlic powder just to give it a little more flavor. And then I'm going to keep stirring it until the sugar dissolves. Now this only takes maybe a minute to do. That's why if you do it in the microwave, it's real quick. And we're just gonna get that sauce made. Now this is what I feel like really makes the meatloaf. If you don't add this sauce, I don't feel like the meatloaf has a lot of flavor. But most of the flavor is coming from the sauce. So in the past I've had comments where 
oh, we used um, marinara sauce or something. Well, then the meatloaf didn't have much flavor. Well, that's because the meatloaf that I'm posting on this recipe, the flavor comes from the sauce. So now I have it all done. I've released the steam and removed the lid. So that part's already been done. So the meatloaf at this point is cooked, but it needs to broil some, which is what we're about to do. The first thing though we need to do is lift this meatloaf out. Now this part you need to do very carefully with your mitts. And we're just gonna lift it out and I'm just gonna sit it here next to me, to the side. And I'm going to get a bowl for the potatoes. So as you can see, the potatoes are all cooked down here. Now I'm gonna take this pot out and just dump the potatoes right into this bowl that I have in front of me. Oop, and I lost one. So sometimes they burn a little bit on the bottom. That usually can be avoided with the water that you're putting in. So I put in about a cup. Rarely do I have them burn, but if they do, just scrape them off and put them in the pot. You'll still have plenty. If this happens, it's only like one. Um, but they normally will come out fine as long as you have enough water in there. Okay, so now I have the meatloaf on the rack. Now what I've done is I've carefully lifted this off like this. You can just lift it off. Now check your the rack because it may be hot and you still need the mitts. Mine wasn't hot, so I just flipped it around. So basically you've got this meatloaf and originally you have it sitting like this with the rack at the highest point, right? So now you're gonna take the meatloaf off and you're just gonna flip the rack around because we want it now to be at the lowest point. So we've got the meatloaf in here. Now I'm gonna put this in the pot. You can see where the potatoes left their mark a little bit. So now I've got this at the lowest point and now I'm gonna carefully scoot this over as much as I can just to fit it in here. And then we're gonna put our corn right on the side. Now the corn is gonna take a minute to fit, but what I've done is I go ahead and put it in foil and I just squeeze it up there so that it fits. So you can see that. Now I'm gonna open up the meatloaf like this and I'm going to go ahead and coat it with my sauce that I did earlier. So I've got my sauce and we're just going to coat that really well. You wanna be sure that it's fully coated. So I'm pouring this on here and then I just brush it on and it just needs to be fully coated. I use almost all the sauce to do this because I want it to be full of flavor. So we've got that on here. I'm just rubbing it in, letting it run down here. Um, it's still covered in foil, so it's really not gonna drop to the bottom unless you don't have it in the foil anymore, but how I do it is I keep it in the foil. So anyway, I've got all my sauce on here. And now we're just gonna broil this. So I am going to just kind of move this over a little bit. I kind of dripped a little bit of sauce there. And I've got my corn, my meatloaf, all of it right here. And now, so let's get that on broil. So I've got it on broil and I'm gonna reset the time here to five minutes. All right, so I did the broiling for five minutes, so now I'm just gonna open this up and stir up the corn. And I'm just doing this so I can be sure that it all gets cooked in here. So just stir it up. Now while the other is broiling, we can go ahead and do these potatoes. So I use a potato masher, just a hand masher. You can do, um, a, a electric one too if you want, but I just mash them up with the hand masher as much as I can. So we're just mashing those down. Um, they're usually pretty easy to mash because they're nice and soft from being in the pressure cooker. So I've almost got these mashed and then we're gonna add a little bit of milk or cream. You can use half and half. You can use cream, you can use fat-free milk, whichever you prefer. So I have these all mashed, and now I'm going to add my milk in. 
Now I'm going to add sour cream, just a little bit to give it some flavor. I'm going to add in my butter. Now the butter should melt pretty quickly because you don't have, or you have hot potatoes basically. And then I'm going to add some garlic salt to taste. I eyeball this um, only because I've made these enough to know kind of how much I need. But you are more than welcome to measure that out and start with like a fourth of a teaspoon and then move up from there. So now we are just going to mix these together. It's going to take a few minutes to mix them. To the point where I think, oh, a handheld mixer would be nice. But for some reason, I really like that manual just potato masher. It just feels like it works better to me. So we got those all mashed and they'll be ready to serve with our corn and our meatloaf as soon as it gets done. So now you can see that the meatloaf is done, the corn is done, so we're just gonna get this out of the foodie and get it ready to serve for dinner. Okay, so this is usually how we plate this for dinner. Um, this can be served family style, so you can just put the mashed potatoes in, your corn, and then we have the meatloaf cut here. And as you can see, this looks delicious and it gets kind of like a candied top with the sauce. So it just kind of coats right on top of there. I also like to add parsley on top too, just makes it a little bit prettier. So you have all of your dinner ready to go and your family's gonna love it. So that is how you make the one pot Ninja Foodie meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and corn. So I have my meatloaf, mashed potatoes, corn, and they are all ready to go. Now, this recipe is a little more tricky than the other ones. It might take you a little bit longer the first time you do it, but after you make this a few times, you'll realize it's actually really simple and it won't take you nearly as long. Um, we love how it comes out, and again, like I said, we love the sauce on the meatloaf, so that's our favorite part, but feel free to use your own meatloaf recipe if you want, if you have a family favorite, and just use this method, it will work. So anyways, I want to thank you again for joining in. You can find this recipe and more on mommyhatescooking.com. I'll also put anything I used or mentioned below in the show notes too. I hope you tune in next time for the next recipe. Thanks again.